we got some poetry coming on y'all. His name is Black Ice. <laughs> Black Ice is one of the greatest spoken word entertainers of this generation. So y'all ready? Black Ice, come on down. Today, my son was asked a question by his teacher to draw a picture of his hero. And after thinking for a moment about who made the most of the Negro, he drew a picture of me and the Negro. He came home and he posted it on the refrigerator door. And when I saw it, it touched me to the core. I was outdone. There's nothing more than a father wants to hear than admirations from his son. So that at night as I tucked them in, I wanted to be crystal clear. So I said, silly whispered in his ear, son, I love you. And yawning with his hands in front of his mouth, he said, daddy, I love you too. As he laid in front of me, I was touched. It was like a needle had stuck me in my arm and my blood was right in front of me. So I thought to myself, I wonder, does he really know for me what he has done? And does he know that I never could have been a father until he made me one? And that until he was born, I really never knew me. And that I didn't know a thing about responsibility until he gave it to me. And that until he was born, my future was kind of dim. But now that he's here, my life has been extended. Because even when I'm gone, I can live through him. And although me and your moms don't get along, and that leaving you and your little brother in the house overnight was dead wrong, yet he was strong enough to take the time out to take care of his little brother. It's just a shame that at 11 years old, he had to play the role of the man of his mom's house. Yet with all these distractions, he struggled to keep his eyes on the prize. By dealing with the everyday life of living in a low income high rise, not to mention dealing with his mother's addiction to drugs. But I swore my life that he would never be a statistic or listed as a thug. So when he would come home with me on the weekend, I would help to build his self esteem. See, I allowed him to dream and told him just what it meant to be a strong black king and kept him away from all hurt, harm, and danger. And told my son, you can be successful living in a low-income home if Jesus was born in a manger. But there was like this deep-rooted anger that reflected in his attitude, which caused some of his teachers to call me at home from school, but they ain't got a clue as to what he's going through now. And until he found a way to channel his anger, it just kept on slowing him down. But I'm proud to announce that he finally got it under control. Not only did he win first place in the school science project, but for the first time in his life, my little 11-year-old made the honor roll. So when I think about all the obstacles, the peer pressure from the other children, all the slamming and banging that he sees in front of his mother's building, the drug problems dealing with his mother, playing the role as the man of his mom's house and taking care of his little brother. See, when I think about how far he has come, and despite all the obstacles, everything that he has achieved and done, my son, they consider me to be his hero. But to me, my hero was my son. That's that piece. <laughs> to all my fathers, sisters, give it up for all the fathers that are in the house, that are in the building today. I am Brother Black Ice Minister DeAndre Hawthorne as well. And that son that I wrote that poem about, it's amazing that how God fixes things um, in fighting to get custody of my son. For some reason, the courts don't work too well with fathers who try to do the right thing. But I got a phone call out of the blue from social services. They said, Mr. Hawthorne, we need you to come and pick up your son. I'm like, what's going on? So apparently, the drug issues and the drug problems that she had led the children to be taken away, and I was able to get custody of my son and be a father to my son. God knew what he was doing. Because a year after I got custody of my son, 
My son was diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. Osteosarcoma. Mm -hmm. And he didn't make it. He passed away September the 3rd, 2008. Mm -hmm. But for that remainder part of his life, he was able to be under the roof and under the everyday covering of a father who instilled in him that he needs to know Jesus. Yes. And that death is nothing but a stop on the station of life. Oh, you, if there's a stop out the death, it's called everlasting life in the kingdom of God. And so I'm happy to say that although we've experienced that, my son knew Jesus. He knew God and he knew that according to Revelation 21 and 4, that there would come a time that there would be no more death, no more sickness, no more sorrow. For the former things would have passed away. Amen. Happy Father's Day, fathers. I want to talk about this man right here, though. Bishop James A. Jones. How could we honor a man who has given so much to build up God's sheep? Deliver the word of God to strengthen those who are struggling and those who are spiritually weak and make them strong. Yes, I'm talking about Bishop James A. Jones. Oh, a husband, a father of three. God put him on the path and he's been walking in his anointing towards his destiny. A roof of our trade. Never wavering in his faith. When it comes to Jesus, he has no doubt. And it's no mistake that God made this man a roofer because see, God knew that any true church with a good foundation would need a roofer to cover his house. He's a soldier for Christ. The war against Satan is no easy thing. But God has been preparing this brother since the Vietnam era when he served in the military as a Marine. Bishop, you are a man of integrity, a leader and a beacon of light. And it's no mistake that you are named after the brother of Jesus Christ, James. The J represents the journey that God shows you to take. Like Paul on the road to Damascus, he's showing us that God can use anybody. It's never too late. The A is that anointing and that passion for your faith. The M represents the man of God and the saints for Christ that you are helping to make. The E is that excellence that you put in all things, yet you stay humble and meek. For it is no easy thing being a shepherd over God's sheep. Last but not least, that S is because today on Father's Day, we salute you, man of God. And the 35 years of this ministry, we pray that the Lord continues to bless you and keep you strong. Sisters and brothers, stand to your feet and let's applaud our brother and salute him. Bishop James A. Jones.